Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. If you've just tuned in, this is the ninth channel of the series in the island nation of Iceland. The group comes together, not for the last time, but as this group for the last time. I speak to the group and I say this. In these days, dear ones, there have been some seeds planted with each of you. The seeds are good ones. And like any other seed on this planet, when it's buried in the dirt, <clears throat> the farmer has the option to water it or not. To let it grow, to take care of it, to know it's there or not. This is the free choice of every single one of you. Seeds have been planted in those who would never come to a cry on channel. Seeds, perhaps, that would be ones that were curious to want to know a little more about things. Seeds have been planted even with the most esoteric of you. And those seeds are for growth past where you are. Every single one of you is known. You might say known to God, known to spirit, known to the creative source. Every single one of you is known. Not by the name or the face that you carry, but by that soul that is acknowledged by all of earth that a human carries. Humanity intuitively has recognized the soul as something that is eternal. Every belief system on the planet talks about where the soul goes after death. It is part of you. It is above you. And even if you don't believe it, I'll tell you that the traditions of maritimers always talk about souls on board. It is a given. It is innate. It is something that all humanity at some level recognizes. And that soul of yours, that's what is seen in the chair right now. And the human that is connected to the soul is also well known. Of why you might be here, what you think, what you need. But free choice is that word which we use. It means nothing happens, no seed grows unless you ask it to, unless you are willing to look beyond that which you have been taught. And perhaps at some secret time you might say to yourself, I doubt this is true, but I want to know more. And if that's you, it'd be just like my partner who sits in the chair. I would like to briefly repeat a parable I gave you many years ago because it's germane to your time. We sit here now at a time on the planet that is worried about the virus. Much is happening trying to stop it. Many are wringing their hands, wondering what's next. They're in fear. The parable I give now was many years ago. But it's a parable that needs to be repeated. The parable is about the mother and the son. Imagine for a moment in this allegory, in this story, that a mother has a small infant son, three or four years old, inquisitive he is, learning to talk. The mother, like all mothers, will spend time looking at him and saying, oh, you have so much to learn, I wish I could give you advice that you could know now. I wish I could tell you 
Those things which you're going to encounter that might frighten you, but that are okay. I wish I could tell you the pitfalls, what not to do and what to do if you'd listen. I wish I could, I could have a moment with your soul. I wish I could have, have something that, that I know isn't available. You've got to grow up. You've got to get to a certain age where you won't listen. <laughs> you'll go your own way, and then you'll listen later, and then you'll have to learn your own things your own ways. I wish I could thwart that a little bit. I wish I could help. And every mother does that. Every mother looks at the newborn, the child, and said, what a life is before you. What beautiful things you're going to discover. I'd love to show you more. Imagine in this moment, an angel appears and says, dear ones, I'm going to give you your wish. And for just a moment, I want you to go and look at your child, because when you look at your child and he looks at you, He will have the mind of an adult for just a few moments. And he can ask three questions of you. And you'll be able to talk to him because his intellect will be the same as yours. Just what you asked for. The thing is this, you cannot do anything but answer. You cannot talk to him. You cannot preach to him. You're not telling him what to do or what not to do. He's got to ask. He gets three questions. The mother was astonished and says, this is it. This is what I wanted all along. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. She went into the room, looked at her son, and he looked at her and said, greetings, mother. I love you so much. Oh, can you imagine for just a moment the intellect that poured into him just as an adult, spanning 30 years or more. And she says, oh, this is a great time. Please, son, ask your questions. And he looks around in the room, and he looks at her, her, his mother and, and all the things, and he says, mother, there's something I've always wanted to know. Why is the sky blue? The mother is almost mortified with the question. No, 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 that can't be the question she thinks. No, 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 get to something substantive. Who cares why the sky is blue? She does her best to to answer the best a mother would know. The next question comes, and it's about the waves in the ocean. (laughs) And she goes, not again. He's supposed to have an intellect. He's supposed to be like I am. He's, he's supposed to know what to ask. He's smart. She talks to him about the, the tides and the ocean and all of these things. The third question comes, and it's just as mundane as the other two. What the child has done is to look around his reality what he has seen already in three years, and ask the best questions he has. And then it was over. The, the, the story, dear ones, is a metaphor, and it's about you. It's about our time right now. So I ask you, what if you were given right now The choice to ask three questions of spirit, of God, the creator. As human beings, with the intellect you have right now, what would you ask? And the parable says that the most common questions would be right now, why did this happen? How do we get out of it? What's next? In other words, you'd waste them all. Because you'd only ask questions from that which you see from your perspective as a human being. You would not know what to ask because you don't know what you don't know. And so the parable ends with this. What's the best question to ask? What's the only question to ask? Let's say you had one. And this goes for all listening and all in the room. Because the answer will be unique for you. And here's the question. Dear God, dear spirit, dear creator. 
Tell me what it is I need to know. <laughs> Profound it is because you opened the door for all of the information. Like the mother would love to have heard from her boy. If the boy had said this to her, she'd still be talking now. You understand this. The door is open with intent to give you what you need. And it doesn't have to be about the virus. It can be about your next step in life. About how to take care of yourself perhaps better to meet the right people or find the right things. Some of them may be sitting here and you haven't really met with them or listened to them. Because there's a lot of knowledge carried by light workers in these groups. Dear Spirit, tell me what it is I need to know. And that you don't expect handwriting on the wall or a voice from beyond. What you do is you be quiet and continue your life. And in that, synchronicity will start to supply the answers just like you ask for. Some of you will see them come, some of you will not. But that is the question at this time, the most mature one anyone could ask. I tell you this because as you go from this place... These things are going to be needed. Let the seeds blossom that have been planted this day in every single one of you. Leave differently than you came. And so it is.